Okay. Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, November 12, 2015. This is the week in charts. This week we have a sponsor, WebinarSoon.com. There's a webinar. Soon. All right, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as I like to sum it up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Got a couple quick announcements I want to get out real quick. Uh, no show next week. I will be in Germany speaking the good word on uh, trend following and technical analysis. If you are from Germany, I uh, hope to see you there. Uh, I'm going to try to meet with as many people as possible. So uh, please let me know if you are in Germany, and I'll be happy to uh, meet with you. Also, uh, there may be some discounts and coupons that I can get to you if you're interested to get you into the show. Um, I don't know how much, but every little bit helps, I suppose. Maybe take care of that, that bus fare if you're local. Let me just get this pin plugged in one second. Okay. Um, so anyway, we're we'll trading next week, and I'm speaking all three days. I'm doing a full conference one day, and then two uh, short sessions on the other days. And I'll be hanging around, hanging around the show, so if you want to catch up with me there, that'd be great. Um learn in the theory and then watch in practice i just recently launched this um oh, i'm sorry this is the wrong slide here i'll go back to this uh, i'm having a special this week it ends on friday if you get the stock selection course you get a whole year of the service and uh, oh this, this is right uh, learn in theory and then watch it unfold in practice so you can see all the setups that i recommended all the uh landry list and everything we had a we had one takeoff big uh, on a landry list just yesterday uh, but you'll be able to see those. A uh, little bit of a delay in there, but at least you'll be able to follow along. Okay. Do I speak German? No, unfortunately, I do not. I speak a little Italian, un poco italiano, and not very well, but I'm working on it. Germany is the Italy. Uh, yeah, it's not too far, right? Uh, you guys are lucky over there. You hop on a train, and then you're in a foreign country. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'd love to see you there, uh, Paolo, if you'd like to uh, – to join me, and I can uh, maybe we could speak a little bit, uh, parlo a little italiano. It sounded like Cajun, didn't it? Okay, hey, what do we talk about? Um, actually, this is leftover from last week, so we're not gonna talk about that. I want to talk about looking under the hood. And uh, Aaron, I'll show you. I'll get to that slide in a minute, and we'll, I'll show you exactly how to do that. The question is how to sign up for the delayed service. If you go to my website and look at new this week, it's it's there, and I'll, I'll reiterate that in a little while. Uh, this morning I woke up thinking about looking under the hood and to, to see what's really going on in a market. And not that I'm happy the market's kind of selling off a little bit, but it's kind of cool to see things kind of um, not deteriorate a little bit. I don't want to be negative, but just kind of like roll over a little bit in here. And again, it's just a so far, it's just a, a, a not so good morning, but things could change. Let's not look at the micro too much, but I think it's real important that you – look at uh, what's really happening within the database. Okay, Bobby, we'll get to that. Good question. So when you start looking at charts, you don't want to just look at the indices because a lot of times the indices can mask what's really going on. And this is especially true if you have a capitalization weighted or so-called cap weighted index because a few stocks could prop up the entire index and somebody told me a while back a lot of these these fund managers who claim to be quote unquote stock pickers they'll actually pick a lot of the big cap stocks that are in the major indices so they can kind of um i hate to use the word hide behind the market but the, they're guaranteed at least to do as well or as poorly i guess as the overall market and that's one technique they, they use is to just buy the bigger cap weighted stocks within a major index. Not my way of doing things. But before I digress too far, the main thing about capitalization weighting that you have to pay attention to is just make sure there's just not a few stocks that are leading the way. And then if there are many leaders in a variety of sectors, then the market is strong. So if you see a bunch of different stocks that are set up and hitting new highs, then you might be okay. The market might be okay. And even if a few of those begin to falter a little bit, then that's okay. And there's enough other stocks to keep the market afloat. 
But if you're seeing that narrow leadership, that's when you got to be a little nervous. Like right now, we've got a few big cap stocks. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of bond funds that are kind of high up in the list as far as like in the new highs list. And we're going to talk quite about that in just one second. And also, you need to pay attention. Is it a defensive related issue? So when the market gets a little iffy, capital flows from the more speculative issues in the momentum stocks over to the more defensive area. So something like consumer not durables, because in bear markets, people still have bodily functions, not to be too gross. And then they also eat, I guess, which makes the bodily functions. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's why you have like foods and, and uh, sometimes drugs uh, or in that category, because people still take drugs in a bull market. Although, as we'll see in one second, the drugs are not joining in. Now, so I am seeing a little flight to defensive issues, and I want to talk about that in a few minutes. In fact, as I show you exactly how I do my analysis, this will make more and more sense. So the first thing I like to do is I like to look at the 52-week highs. Now, I don't look at all 52-week highs. I look at the 52-week highs within my tradable universe. And by the way, anything I'm showing you today is free as far as the scans are concerned, as far as the lectures concerned today. So if you want my scans, you want my formulas, everything I do is fully disclosed. The uh, reason I do that is most people don't have the time or inclination to do, any, to do it anyway. I know most of you guys here work your butts off, so I, I appreciate that, uh, that, you would, that you would actually do your own homework and follow along. But somebody at, at Market Wizards once said that he could publish his trading system on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and people wouldn't follow it. So I'm not really worried about showing you what I do. And first of all, it is a lot of work. And for me, it's being on a treasure hunt. And we're going to get to that in just one second. But the first thing, again, we take a look at the 52-week highs. And this is the tradable universe. And again, if you want this formula to make this, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, I, I meant to look before the, the uh, presentation. I don't know if it's 30 days or 50 days. If it is, If it is 50, I was thinking about changing it back to 30 because I want to get those IPOs in there as soon as possible, although I do look at the IPOs later in my analysis. But the first thing I want to do is I want to dig into the market and see what's happening. Now, the, the great thing about looking at those 52-week highs, again, is you get to see where the leadership makeup is, okay? Is it in a lot of different stocks, or there are a lot of new highs, or there are just a few new highs? The market begins to sell off a little bit. You hardly don't see any. In fact, uh, if we see a little more weakness today, there probably won't be that many new highs. And then, again, the makeup of these new highs is very important. So this morning I was taking a look at these, and this is a bond ETF, obviously, short-term bond. So that's a bond ETF. This is a food stock that's defensive. It's hit new highs. Another bond, another bond. Huge cap stock. What is this? Amazon, right? And then another huge cap stock, Google, okay? So you could have this narrow leadership at these big cap stocks, which is keeping the market afloat. Because somebody recently emailed me like, hey, Dave, Amazon, new highs. Uh, Google, new highs. It's a bull market. And I'm thinking, Nicholas, fine. You know, no, not necessarily just because you got a couple of big cap stocks making new highs. Now, that's a positive development, don't get me wrong, but you better make sure there's something else that's also making new highs when you're seeing that happen. Um, defensive issues, again, here's another food, this DMND, Diamond Foods, you can see that's defensive. And then another bond fund. So for the most part, there's quite a few, oh, look at this, I didn't even notice it, GE, that's a huge cap stock. Okay, so we see a bunch of huge cap or at least uh, big thick stocks in here. And they had quite a few of these bond funds that are at or near new highs. So most of this list or quite a few of these in the top 20 at least are within this narrow area. Fairly big cap stocks. Again, not to beat the dead horse, bonds and defensive issues. So that tells you a little bit about the makeup. Now, one thing I like to do, I don't want to digress too far. But one thing I like to do, and it's a lot of work, and I've been having trouble keeping up with it lately because it's so much work, but I like to take these new highs and then put them over into what I call my Landry 100 list. And then if there's some weakness in, in the list, I like to kick out the weaker members and put in newer members. So uh, yesterday I'll have to check the list, but I'm pretty sure I put it at DMND if I haven't put it in recently and a couple of other ones um, that are making new highs that are food – related stocks okay so those will go into that momentum list and keeping an eye on the momentum list helps to remind me where the leadership is 
every day. So it's a good exercise. Um, from that exercise, I've learned some really cool things, some things I already knew, but it kind of reiterates them. Like when momentum, when the market's getting ready to get a hit, that list just gets absolutely whacked, those momentum stocks. And then when you start seeing a lot of foods in that list because the database is feeding in those foods, no pun intended, then you know that, again, you're in a defensive kind of market or defensive type of market. The other thing, too, is um, it's not going to happen right now because the REITs recently rolled over, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. But if you are seeing some areas like REITs and some of these other stocks, some of these big kind of uh, maybe utilities and something like that, not that my point is that they're interest related, but if you are seeing some of these stocks that are kind of sleepy stocks just kind of up there that aren't really known for being momentum stocks, then it's probably not a, a, a great market to trade. The market has kind of left momentum behind. Maybe I need to rephrase that. Like I said earlier, momentum is usually first to go when a market begins to tank. And the fast, the uh, it's kind of the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And those stocks become a source of funds really, really fast. Uh, and I don't know the psychology behind it, but I'm guessing that these stocks are up at high levels and these fund managers begin seeing things getting a little iffy and they say, you know what, maybe I better lock and load. Also, sometimes I call it window undressing because window dressing to those of you who have been around for, for ages is when the fund manager puts these go-go stocks in their portfolio, these big winners, these big gainers right before they release their portfolio to their clients. So it's kind of like a, a, a department store, if if they still exist. I guess they still exist. I was looking at Macy's yesterday as a chart. That thing really has, has tanked and a few other ones too. Uh, Kohl's this morning, that's another one. Anyway, in the, you have the window with you put the, the, the fancy item, something to draw you in, something exciting out in that window to get you in the store. So the window dressing, that's where that comes from because they put their – they're good look. They, they get into these good looking stocks to make it look like they've always been in those stocks. But what's kind of perverse is if the market begins to tank, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So I call it window addressing. All of a sudden, they have to rush to get rid of these stocks quickly before their returns deteriorate uh, and, and quickly at that. Now, once I dive in, let's um, let me show you the uh, the new highs by getting into the database a little bit, and then we'll, I'll show you the next step here. So we go to the database, and we go to my tradable universe, and I'll show you how to make that too. It's real simple. All I'm doing is I'm going to all stocks, and you can recreate this in other chart packages. Um, I do, I also use Metastock, but this is uh, for a lot of my analysis, I use telecharts as you know. And then I have a PCF, which is just 250-day average volume, and it's right here. And let's just see how many days that is. I don't know if it'll show up on your screen. It's behind one of these windows somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's not going to let me um, edit it on this um, screen. In fact, i got to find it now. Why do you use the old version of TC? Because I would, with software, you have to pry it from my cold, dark, from my cold dead hands before I change versions. Average volume 30. Uh, I don't know for a fact, but I know that there's some stuff in the newer TC uh, or there's some, there's some things that are missing in the newer TC that I like to use, like – Somebody tell me, if you let me know, maybe it's time for me to change, but the uh, HV, uh, I could put uh, something like HV on my chart and these custom fields up here. I don't know if the newer one has that. Um, I still like the fact that the old one is locally based, although I think they did send me a copy of the new one that's uh, locally based, so you guys could confirm that too. So I don't want to turn it into a TC lesson, so, uh, but do let me know. Uh, and by the way, I just checked the volume is 30 days on the volume. So I take the 30-day uh, stocks that are greater than 250,000 on average, 
and then I copy them over to my tradable universe. And you can see we have 3,263 stocks in the tradable universe. The next thing I like to do, as I just said, is sort of buy new high. So price as a percent of 52 week highs. So this is going to be a little bit of a moving target and change a little bit because the market is obviously open. And I like to look through a few of these or the top. Sometimes I'll go as many as maybe a couple hundred of these. And you can see some of these are buyouts. And then look, there's the bond fund. There's another bond fund. Adobe, that's a big thick stock, okay? Uh, here's another bond fund. Uh, here's a eh, relatively thick stock, but it's up at new highs. Liberty Media, Liberty, Liberty Media easy, for, easy for me to say. Some sort of buyout or something, a buyout or buyout. So you kind of want to toss those out and not get too excited about them. Another one of these bond funds. It looks like it's down at new lows, but if you back the chart way out, it's just within like a, a half a point from old high. So it's kind of meaningless. Some sort of, I don't know if this is a bio or whatever, but it's a meaningless chart. Another bond fund, another bond fund. So you kind of get the idea, big thick stock, you can see. So for the most part, there are big thick stocks in here. There's Amazon. And then there's a lot of these bond funds that are in here. So that gives you a feel for what's going on. Another bond fund, Google, another bond fund. So I think you kind of get the idea. So when you see a bunch of bond funds and big cap stocks and defensive issues in there, it's a good thing that you have the big cap stocks and that they're rallying, but you sure would like to see a lot more go-go stocks up in this list. So it kind of gives you a good feel for what's going on. As you scroll further down, there's GE and some other big stocks and some bond funds down here. So there's not a whole lot to get excited about. And by the way, I don't want to digress too far, but obviously as stock pickers, as people trying to beat the market and not just follow along as a indexer or something, we're looking for inefficiency. So I'll just show you inefficiency at its finest. Here's a little, like a little IPO that was on the radar a couple days ago. And you can see that it rallied up, uh, made like a 20, 30% jump overnight. So that's, that's the type of move we're looking for. Whereas if you're playing Google or Amazon or GE, that type of move percentage wise is going to take you a long, long time. I mean, yeah, GE went up from here to here. But how big is that move? That's 4% move, and that's, uh, oh, I don't know, four weeks or so, three or four weeks time, maybe a little bit less. But the point is that really it takes a while for these big stocks to move, and something bad can still happen in a big stock. So I much prefer the inefficient issues. Now, sometimes these big shot stocks can make wonderful shorting opportunities, and that's what I call the, the go-go nomo, meaning that the momentum – is, is no longer, and they begin to run, roll over because they're priced for perfection. Now, again, you know you know me, I tend to digress a little bit, but before I digress too far, there's a report, a special report under free reports on my website for inefficient stocks and why you should trade inefficient stocks, and there's also one on the, uh, the aforementioned GoGo Nomo. So read those as time allows. But anyway, as you can see, you get a feel for what's going on by looking at the new um, – the new high list, okay? Now, let's look a little further. Now, the next thing I like to look at after going through a couple hundred of those new highs is I like to go through a couple thousand stocks. Now, that seems like a lot, and I doubt that GoToWebinar will be able to keep up with me, but you gotta realize that I'm just flipping through those charts really quickly. And usually when I speak, um, although lately it seems like the audience has been a little shy, but usually I'll, I'll, I'll ask the audience if anybody's a musician. And usually at least a couple people raise their hand, and I'll ask them how they got good. And, of course, they'll say, well, I practice, dumbass implied. Well, if you want to get better at looking at charts, then look at a lot of charts. I was I'm working on an article that's due today for uh, proactive uh, money manager advisor, proactive magazine. I forget the exact title. I'm probably gonna be shot if they listen to this. And, um, I was thinking about that and I kind of did a quick calculation in my head 
And I think I'm probably up to about 10 million charts that I've looked at over the last 20 something years. And now I'm not looking at a chart and go, hmm, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? You know, maybe I'm doing that in my head, but it happens at the blink of an eye. And we're going to take a look at that in one second. Again, I don't think the software will keep up. We'll give it a shot. But then there's questions you need to ask yourself. Are most in uptrends or are most in downtrends or are most just kind of going sideways? And also, again, you need to ask yourself, where is the leadership? Okay. They may not be at 52-week highs, but is there leadership or emerging leadership within the market? Is, is, are there some emerging trends that are happening, maybe in the commodities, maybe um, metals mining, golds, or something like that, or not? Or most trends, or most stocks sideways, or most stocks choppy? And then are there debacle de jours? Because debacle de jour, what I mean by that is like a stock just gets absolutely annihilated overnight, gets torpedoed and it drops significantly. So you need to keep an eye out for that too in the database. If you start seeing a lot of stocks just absolutely taken out behind a woodshed and beaten or shot, however you want to look at it, whatever metaphor you want to use, then maybe the market might be in a little bit of trouble. Now, if you're finding a lot of setups, then you need to, number one, you need to think about whether or not you sh should be trading. And, and the answer to that question is yes. You need to listen to the database. Someone recently said that I'm hiding behind the database because I'm not showing a lot of setups. Well, if the database isn't producing a lot of setups, I'm not going to try to make something happen. Like Peter Mothy once said when I was on a project, when I told him, I know you guys have heard the story a thousand times, but I, I said, look, Peter, I don't know if you guys are going to really want me in this project because I might just sit on my hand for weeks and weeks, sit on my hands for weeks and weeks. And then if something comes to me, I'm going to recommend it, but I'm not just going to recommend trades. He goes, you're exactly the guy we want. Don't invent trades. And that made a lot of sense to me. And I've, I've quoted him quite often on that. But if you're seeing a lot of setups, then you need to be trading. If you're not seeing many setups or if you try, it's really hard to find setups, then you need to be sitting on your hands. You're going to find after looking after, at charts year after year after year, after a while, the best setups are going to like almost jump off the page at you. And if you're not having that kind of moment happen, then you need to go back to just sitting on your hands or continue to sit on your hands, whatever the case may be. And that's going to make a little bit more sense in one second. Now, one thing that you need to do when you're looking at those charts is what I call deliberate practice. In fact, in preparation for this webinar today, I actually found myself doing that quite a bit. In fact, anytime I look at charts, I find myself uh, practicing deliberate practice and do some research on that. I've got books and articles and stuff I need to read on that. But uh, the bottom line is it's one thing to practice, but it's another thing to have deliberate practice where you're working to get better. And it's a it's a it's an interesting subject that I'm fascinated with. But the way you do that or the way you do that with with stocks and charts and markets is you look at charts, lots of charts, but don't just look at them. Notice the ones that are making big moves. Notice the ones when you're looking at that 52 high week high list that made some big moves. Notice as you're going through the charts, notice the ones that have been in serious downtrends for a long time or imploded. Notice the ones that took off. Notice the ones that come out of emerging trends. And ask yourself in a very honest manner, and this is where the deliberate practice comes in. Ask yourself in a very honest manner, could I have seen that pattern in hindsight? If the answer is yes, then you need to ask yourself a tougher question. Why didn't I? Okay. And you're going to find, I still miss some. I was looking at some this morning. I'm thinking, I, geez, I could, I, I could have been all over that. What happened? But I find that I do catch more and more, and then at least sometimes they're on my radar, like the LITE we just looked at. That was on the Landry list a couple days ago. And if I do miss a big winner, my wife says, well, was it on your radar? I'm like, yeah, well, at least it was on your radar. I'm like, okay. So by getting more and more stocks in your radar that turn into big winners, you know that you're headed in the right direction. So, again, deliberate practice, very important when you're looking at all of these charts. 
And again, if you can't find a setup to save your life, some not, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm almost falling asleep looking at charts. And after hours of, of looking at them, I can't find a setup. It, on good days, usually within the first 10 to 15 minutes, I could find something that's just fantastic. And it just kind of jumps out at me, okay? On a bad day, two hours later, I'm like, there's nothing worthwhile here. I do that analysis, though. I do spend that time doing an analysis because I have clients depending on me. And that sort of forces me to do that even when I don't want to. And every now and then something really useful will come out of that. But for the most part, nine out of ten times within the first, I'd say, sometimes first five minutes, but first, let's say, 10 to 15 minutes of looking through the database, if there's something there, I could find it. And the rest of the time is just kind of confirming and doing all these other things that we're talking about today. So let's hop out and take a look at that. You have HV on type, on this type. What does that mean, on a new new system? Oh, Bobby left. Bobby want to know what's my take on the Fed rate. I don't. I have no idea what that is. The Feds have a rate? <laughs> uh, no, I ignore all news. All right, so I like to go to this tradable universe and sort of buy the 50-day HV. Now, don't get too caught up in the math on this, but HV, and I've got the little field right here, is, uh, okay, you got the code for me, so they must have added that. All right, well, maybe I need to work towards, uh, do you have a local copy or is it online? And if it's online, how fast is it? Because as you can see here in one second, I depend on this database, this uh, chart package to be super duper fast. So don't get caught up in the math on this historical volatility. It's just a measurement of how much a stock has moved around in the past. And the more it's moved around in the past, the more likely it will move around in the future. Now, it's an annualized measurement and statistically based. So I think it's within like the bell curve thing. And again, I'm telling you too much information. You don't have to worry about all this. But um, don't quote me on this because markets aren't normally distributed. If, if they were, whoever had the biggest computer or knew the most about statistics would own the markets. Markets trade on emotions, as you know. But based on the statistical reference over the last 50 days, and that's the look back period that I like to use, the HV tells you annualize how much the stock would move if you annualize that out within the two standard deviation curve. So this particular stock is either going to be 363% higher or 363% lower a year from now. Okay. Well, obviously you can only go 100% lower, but you get the idea. Now, when you see HV above 100, it's kind of dangerous. Okay. And you can see that this was obviously, when I looked at my charts last September, this was obviously a debacle du jour. So it dropped about 90% overnight. So based on that move, which is reflected here, the stock's all over the place. So I like to get through the top ones in here real quick. Every now and then something will catch my eye, but usually you want to go through these charts and then hopefully recording will pick this up because I know that, that GoToWebinar can't keep up, at least at this rate. But just kind of pay attention to what's going on. This Weight Watchers took off in here. That's kind of interesting. It's now got an HV of 200. It's probably too volatile to trade now but you just kind of see what's happening within the database and then again we're still in these higher volatile stocks so we don't want to pay you don't want to get too excited about these because they're all over the place but as this HV begins to drop below 100 we want to start paying more and more attention to what's going on and now that the HV is starting to drop down in here I'm seeing a lot of stocks that are in downtrend. There's ones in downtrend, sideways, downtrend. Oh, that was a, an ETF, so ignore that. But you get the idea. Are most stocks in uptrends or most stocks in downtrends? And this could be quite telling. And so far, I really haven't seen anything that exciting yet. We're, we're in HV of about 130 now. And you see the HV is going to drop down as we go further and further. But here's another. This would have been a debacle du jour a couple days ago, okay? And then before that, it was just going straight sideways. Here's one just kind of scraping bottom, banging out new lows. So just kind of pay attention to what's going on. And so far, as you go through these, you just see that most of these are sideways to lower, banging out new lows. Here's another debacle du jour from a few days ago. 
I don't know if this one counts. This might have been a buyout. That's a good thing, obviously. But again, for the most part, mostly sideways, mostly downtrends. It's just not a whole lot to get excited about. So I like to go through most of these. When the HV gets down below 30, I tend to kind of speed it up even further. Because usually your most your biggest opportunities are going to be, and I'm always asked to define exactly where. I don't know. It varies with the markets. But right now, sweet spot's probably around 40 to 70 or so with the DHV, 70 being a little high in volatility, 40 being volatile, but not crazy volatile. So again, it's not rocket science. Most of these stocks are setting or heading sideways. Uh, something like this would catch my eye. It's kind of bottomed out, rallied off of lows, pulled back a little bit, it's IPO. So that would certainly go onto my watch list. And in fact, it did. If you didn't catch the signal, uh, Get the uh, service in hindsight, and you'll see that signal in a few days. So, again, most are in downtrends. I only saw one so far that sort of caught my eye. But this is, this is, this is what I do. Now, I could spend an entire day telling you how to read these charts, and I did in my stock selection course. But this is the actual – this is what I actually do every day is I look at a lot of charts, and that really gives you a feel for what's happening. New highs list for 30, 60, 90 days produces small and less efficient stocks. Yeah, I agree with you, Howard, but I'm going to find those anyway. Now, sometimes I will come in uh, if I'm working on my momentum list and I can't find anything at new 52-week uh, highs, I'll come into my momentum list and I'll look at the 90-day highs and 30-day highs and so on and so forth. But when I get to my scans, I'm going to find those stocks anyway if I haven't already found them by going through a lot of stocks. So I already found the stock that I want to go after today by just flipping through a lot of charts as I just did, okay? But yes, after that, I will come in and run my more specific scans. In fact, since we're here, let's do that now. So I changed my watch list back to the entire universe, the entire tradable universe. I'm sorry, the entire universe of stocks, all stocks. Do, do you use the iVolatility website? No, I've played with it before, Susan. Um, but I don't use it anymore. I used to be um, – I was always fascinated with momentum after I had a brief stint in, in fundamentals. And then I did a fundamental slash uh, technical approach. And then I found myself finding a lot of stocks that were technically okay but fundamentally poor. And I went after them anyway and started doing okay by trading just technical stocks. And then I kind of let that fundamental thing fall off or fall by the wayside and focus mostly on technicals and momentum. And then later on in my career, I started studying emerging trends because a lot of my momentum stuff, I was waiting too long for those trends to occur. And I was missing a lot of the, the beginning of the moves, which could be very powerful. So where am I going with this? Well, at one point, I really got into volatility. And I'm glad I did because it really taught me a lot about markets and it's really helped me out. And all of this stuff kind of shapes you and makes you who you are. And I do know now that when the volatility gets compressed, look for an expansion. And I've actually have systems built on that. But I'm still, or I'm still, well, I'm 100% I'm focused on momentum and emerging trends. But I still have that volatility in the back of my mind. So uh, that's a long-winded answer saying, no, I don't use that. But um, I did pay attention to a lot of stuff back then so we start all the stocks by the hv and then i come back in and restart them and this is a secondary sort it doesn't work perfectly but it works pretty darn good it's going to give me the recent um new highs that have pulled back so howard had said earlier about the 30 90 day highs well these are 20 day highs that have pulled back so let me show you what that's going to look like in the slides if I can get a blank slide to come up. So my scan is really, really, really simple. It's a bolded it down to the utmost simplicity. And this is all I need. Okay. Kind of reminds me that was that all I need is this paddle game and a lamp. What did Steve Martin say? 
All I'm looking for is a recent 20-day high. If you looked at every 20-day high, you would probably – well, I wouldn't say you drive yourself nuts because I'm looking at all stocks anyway, but it would be difficult – to find your setups if you just look at all the 20-day highs, okay? So I look at recent 20-day highs, meaning that either today or even a few days ago, and I think I go to about eight days in my look-back period. So if that new high was either a day ago or two days ago or three days ago or eight days ago, I know that this stock has taken off and pulled back a little bit. Now, it might not be worthwhile trading. It's still going to spit out. First time I gave somebody my scans, they're like, uh, well, even today I give people my scans. David threw out 800 stocks. What am I going to do with that? Well, you're going to look at them. That's what you're going to do with that. And if you don't have time to look at them, you're going to pay me to do it for you. And I love doing that. I love doing work for people who don't have time to do it or don't care to do it. I, I wish I had me. I wish I could take a vacation. I wish I had me to call and say, hey, what do you got? Nothing. I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So that's all I'm looking for in my in my scans, and it's just it's that plain and simple. Now, why did this stock, this the Baco de Jour stock, get flagged? Well, notice right here it did make a 20-day high, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days ago. So that's within the parameters of the scan. Now, let me interview myself. Do I want to trade the stock? No, it's got a big gap down. There's no reason to go after this. So these ones, once again, high in the list are probably too dangerous to trade, up at 200% volatility. This stock just kind of imploded in here. And also, it also works on the downside, too. So if it's a new low and pull back a little bit, it's going to also show me that. Now, some people like to separate the shorts from the longs to each its own. Depending on the market conditions, I might do that. But the reason I like to look at the shorts and the longs together is because it shows me whether I'm getting more longs or more shorts in a database. And it doesn't give me a, a long bias or a short bias. But again, a 20 days like, okay, was it a 20 day high yesterday? Was it a 20 day high the day before? Dot, 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 all the way up to eight bars. Okay. So popping in, they own, they do own the market. Who owns the market, Howard? So popping back out to the charts, why would this stock show up as a pullback? Well, if you zoom in a little bit, it recently, I think like this day here is a new low, and it's pullback from that low, one-day pullback, okay? And again, I would know in a heartbeat that this isn't something I don't want to trade. It's just absolutely imploded and just kind of scraping bottom in here. Again, another one just kind of looks like the bomb already blew up here. It imploded, and it, if you look carefully down here, it's pullback from its lows, okay? This one, believe it or not, is actually a long 20-day high, and it's pulled back a little bit. It's got a big gap here. Looks like somebody asked about it in the last uh, webinar. Okay. This is a crazy one. Okay. Here's another one. This one's actually a short. It's pulled back from lows. But see, way up here in this high, high HV, you're not going to see a whole lot of stocks that you want to trade. It's just They're just far too dangerous, even for someone – like me now this might kind of catch my eye a little bit you've got a nice head and shoulders bottom you got a little takeoff from the lows pulling back a little bit it's in the energy stocks it's kind of has uh i guess it's sort of bow tie back here so i might save that one off and put that one in my watch list now let me just kind of speed it up believe it or not a little bit so i'll just start flipping through these and the more you do it, the easier it is to, to go through them really quickly and ask yourself, well, they're going up, down, or sideways, and you can see them quickly. You can just kind of look at them real quick. This one's sideways, okay? What is this? This is the metals and mining. All right, that tells me that, hey, at least this one's going kind of sideways. Metals and mining still in trouble. Here's another metals and mining. What's it doing? It's going sideways. Well, I don't want to buy this stock, but it tells me what? Metals and mining are going sideways. So just kind of pay attention to what's happening. And it starts to give you a really good feel for what's going on. So if a stock is hitting new lows, ask yourself what kind of stock or which stock is it? Is that, was that Skeeters? What was that? Let's go back to that. Didn't we talk about this one a few weeks ago? 
Yeah, look at that. There you go. There's your short. We talked about this one as a possible short in the week of charts. Look at that. Okay. That's kind of cool. Again, there's that deliberate practice, okay? Stock broke down. It's kind of a little wide and loose before it broke down, but we did have the setup back here. So pay attention to what's actually happening. Here's one hitting new lows. What is this? Health services. So that tells me, what do we know What do we know already? We know that health services, at least this particular stock's in a downtrend. We saw a couple of metals going sideways. We saw one hitting new lows. So just pay attention to what's happening. And if you're using something like Telechart, where you could just literally bang it out, bang on that keyboard. I've, I'm not going to pick it up and drop it again because one day I might end up breaking it. But sometimes in these webinars, you'll know, I'll pick up the keyboard and drop it. I, I, um, I used to go through at least a keyboard a month, sometimes even less. And then finally one day I didn't have time to go out and get a new keyboard. So I just dug through my closet and I found this old clunky compact keyboard. It must weigh 10 pounds. And I've been banging on this thing for the last five, ten years or however long. It's been a while. Anyway, I wear out a lot of keyboards from banging on the space bar. And this one has a uh, knock on wood, taking a beating and, and keep coming back. Here's the biotech stock. What is it doing? It's going down. Okay. And also notice, again, a lot of these stocks are either going down or what sideways. That's a health services. Okay. This is the biotech stock. What's it doing? It's banging on new lows. Okay. Now, here's an energy stock, and it's on the process of banging out new lows. We saw a couple of energies going sideways, and then we saw a couple of energies here that are at new lows. Here's the biotech sideways, longer term, kind of all over the place. So just kind of pay attention to what's going on. Here's a major drug manufacturer. What's it doing? It's banging out new lows. So another stock banging out new lows. Sideways, sideways, all over the place. Okay, here's an energy company. What's it doing? It's kind of going sideways. Could be bottoming. A little too early, though. So you get a good feel for what's going on internally by going through a lot of charts. Now, we're still going to look at the indices, and we're still going to look at a lot of sectors. But the first thing you want to do at the end of each day is go through a lot of charts to get a feel for what's really happening within the market. And not to soft sell you, but this is, the, this is exactly what I showed you how to do in the stock selection webinar, or seminar, I should say. But on top of that, I added a layer of, okay, this is how we read the charts. And this is why I like this stock. This is why I don't like this one. So now let's take a look. We have an idea of what's going on. It doesn't look too good. Most stocks, as you can see, are headed lower, especially the stocks, the more volatile stocks within reason that we like to trade. So that tells you right there that the market might still be in trouble. The leadership might be a little narrow. Now, as I'm going to say in this article that I'm working on, and people often email me, and, and a lot of times in these programs, you guys bring up some wonderful points. The new high, you know, what's the, the number of new highs versus new lows, uh, percent of stocks above the moving average, or the 200-day moving average, or the 50-day moving average. All of those are relevant indicators. But I would rather just go out and, and just dive in and look at a couple thousand stocks to get a feel for what's really happening within the market. OK. And as you can see, most of these stocks, here's another energy stock going sideways. It wasn't a longer term downtrend. Now it's sideways. So this tells me that, OK, energies are down in new lows. A couple of them are banging out new lows, but a lot of them are going sideways. Around their new lows, just kind of scraping bottom. This looks like the damage has already been done. Maybe they're in the process of bottoming. So maybe I need to pay attention for a possible emerging trends there but i'm not going to rush out and buy them just yet okay now there's a few stocks to the upside in here but the overwhelming number of stocks so far as you can see are either sideways to lower so there's not much to get too excited about and the ones that or or some of the ones that are looking okay uh have like gaps and other problems longer term so you would toss those out 
But if you do this every day, several thousand stocks every day, you'll start to get a feel for markets. Now, you don't have to go as fast as I go while you're learning. Take your time, okay? But something like this, it's electrocardiogram. You should be able to recognize this quickly as electrocardiogram. As I often say, we'll talk about stock selection, counterfeit currency detectives. They don't go out and study a bunch of crappy currencies. They look at the, the genuine article. And once you know what a good-looking setup looks like, okay, no overhead resistance or a nice and or uh, a nice emerging trend, persistency, acceleration, all these things I preach of every day, they begin to jump out at you. They stick out like a sore thumb, right? So when I'm flipping through charts and I see something, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, what I call a Jackie Mason stock or electrocardiogram, I just move on. I don't bother spending much time on it. That would be another one here. Why would I spend time on a stock that went from 50 to 30 to 40 to 30 to 50 to 30? You get the idea, okay? So you will get a real good feel for what's going on within the market. And I love doing this. For me, it's like being on a treasure hunt. I know it's not, it might not be as exciting as you guys, but here's the deal. You bang on this keyboard long enough, you're going to find a big winner. And that big winner, you're going to make a lot of money in it, okay? That's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. But it's very much worthwhile. Okay, now let's take a look at that. We'll get to that one, David. Uh, just give me one second to get through a few more, uh, just a couple more slides and we'll hop out. Now, the next thing I do is I jump out into the sectors and then um, we'll take a look at the the rest. And again, with these loose parameter scans, did we see a lot of setups? No, not really. We saw a few. Mostly longs, eh, I saw a couple longs in there, but not too many. Mostly shorts, yeah, a couple shorts, but not really. And I didn't see the emerging trends, maybe developing. So I'm not hiding behind the database. I'm just, the database isn't producing much. I had one potential long set up in a very speculative issue. Now, how do I'm, I want to word this without talking out of both sides of my mouth. Um, I guess you'd see a lot of speculative issues set up in a really good market and in a in a so-so market or a, anything less than a good market, you might just see a few speculative issues. Now, a very speculative issue with an HV of, let's say, 100 or maybe high double digits can move contra to the market. It has illustrated that it moves much larger than the overall market, and it may not be held captive to the overall market movements. And if you're seeing a lot of those, it means that they're all running and a lot of good, there's a lot of good momentum stocks out there. If you're only seeing a few, then you got to weigh that with what the rest of the database is telling you and then the overall market. And if you still like the setup, then by all means, take it. But the more pieces that fit, the better off you are. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to look at the sectors. And if you don't have a lot of time, you could just look at the, what I call the major MIGs, which is the Morningstar Industry Groups. And if you just hit company name here, we could just look at the major ones first. And then we could dig a little deeper if you like. But what you need to ask yourself is, okay, are they making new highs or making new lows, sideways, all over the place? What's going on? And if you look at an area like defense, it broke out recently, but then it's come right back in. Okay. So you need to kind of think about that. Here's automotive. You can see it stalled well short of its prior highs. Here's another one. Banks have stalled well short of their recent highs in here. Chemical, same sort of action, a little retrace, but then they kind of roll back over. Hardware, retrace. What have they done? Roll back over. Okay, software. Here's another one. It broke out to new highs, but then it came back in. Conglomerates, stalling short of its prior highs. Durables. Stalling short of his prior highs. Same thing for non-durables. Okay. Diversified services broke out to new highs. It's now dropping back below its new highs. Drugs, thrust, choppy pullback, thrust, choppy pullback, and then now we're in a new thrust lower. Okay. Semiconductors, they tried to work their way higher, but they're, they're a long ways from new highs. And on top of that, you've got a ton of overhead supply up here. So all this should be going through your head as you're looking through these sectors. Okay, energy's kind of interesting. They took off. They kind of chopped sideways. 
tried to take off. Now they're coming back in a little bit. Okay. So I'm not as bullish on the energies as I was. I'm not counting them out just yet because maybe they are bottoming in here, but eh, not too excited. I skip financial services because there's a lot of ETFs in there. Foods. Here's another one of these areas off to the races not too long ago came right back in. Okay. So in looking through these sectors, you can see that even the ones that look good, that were just a new highs, are now beginning to come back in. It's kind of like this last little uh in those stocks, that last little gasp higher before they come back in. Health services, choppy, choppy retrace in here. Insurance stalled short of its old highs, right at overhead supply. Now, internet looks okay, and that might just be a few big cap stocks leading that. So let's not get too excited about that. But admittedly, yeah, it's at new highs. That looks okay. Uh, leisure made it right to its old highs, rolled back over, kind of double top looking. Manufacturing stalled well short of its prior highs in here. Okay. So even without going through all 300 sectors, which don't worry, I'm not going to do that to you today. Just going through these major mid groups, you could see that there's really not a whole lot to get excited about. Here's material constructions chopping all over the place. Was that new highs not that long ago and then has imploded from there. Media has just kind of crawled back to their old highs in here. Metals and mining, I thought we were bottoming out, but maybe we're not. Okay. Now we're banging out brand new lows here. Real estate was at brand new highs not too long ago, began to implode. Now we look at everything. We also look at bonds, TLT. And then we look at bonds, we could say, oh, bonds have been imploding as of late too. So as you can see, it's like being on a treasure hunt and you have to look at everything. And if you don't have time to look at everything, look at as much as possible. Notice retail, retrace back up, stalled short of its prior highs in here. Okay, especially retail, look at even worse. Okay. And then there's only a couple more. Telecom, yeah, it's kind of electrocardiogram, retrace, and then roll back over. Tobacco looks okay, but it also looks like it may be burnt out, okay? It took went all the way up, just like off to the races, and then it imploded and it came all the way back to where it broke out. That's not healthy behavior. Transports just look abysmal in here, okay? Now, the other thing to notice, though, notice how choppy this market is. Up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. A lot of sectors look like that. So that tells me it's a market I don't want to be trading, the overall market, and not just the market itself, the sector itself. Again, utilities all over the place, shorter term, they've imploded. And then finally, wholesale all over the place, try to retrace and roll back over. So not a whole lot to get excited about if you're looking at those major industry groups. Now, you do want to look at the sub-industries within, because every now and then you can find something kind of interesting, like regional banks right now are banging out new highs. And you'll know that by looking through all of these stocks okay so you look at a lot of stocks you look at a lot of sectors what's left well obviously the indices so let's take a look at the indices now remember not to beat the dead horse on this but there's people behind the bars on the charts okay there's nothing magical about a blank bar chart which I like to start with and I only end up putting a few indicators on there, and that's just a couple of moving averages. And I like to see indicators as illustrators, but always look at the charts first. We're going to, believe it or not, take a look at the bow ties here in one second. Imagine that. But in looking at the indices, and this chart might be a little dated. I think it might be a few days old or a week old even. But my point lately has been, okay, market gets to new highs. Everyone who's been long is happy. Market begins to sell off. They become unhappy or start to become unhappy, especially anyone who bought right in here because now they're at a loss. If you go in and read that Go Go Nomo report, uh, if I say so myself, I did a wonderful job of explaining overhead supply and how it could dovetail into a really nice setup on the short side. And the market just came right back. So everybody over here is feeling, you know what? I dodged a bullet. Thank God I didn't sell. I'll never do that again because every time the market sells off and I sell, it goes straight back up. A new crop comes along every few years. And this new crop, as I wrote in a column recently, 
was born in 2009. And they feel this eternal sunshine, okay? What's that song by Fastball? I think I wrote about that in the column too, you know. It's always sunny. They'll never get old and gray, you know. The, the roads that they walk on are paved with gold. It's always sunny. They'll never get old and gray. Anyway. So as long as this thing can stay up here and then go higher, everybody's happy. But if it gets a roll over, I think it makes everybody rethink things. Now, when we were down here, a lot of people, Dave, what would it take to make you bullish? We would have to go to new highs. Well, what about between here and there? So what? You have to have a framework that you work around, okay? And you can't just willy-nilly say, oh, it's going back up and just jump back in. No, it's going down and then you jump out you'll drive yourself nuts if you do that. You have to have some sort of framework. And sometimes as a trend follower, you have to let the market do its thing. And right now, the doing its thing is just kind of crawling back up to those new highs. Will we get there? I don't know. But look at some of the areas that actually got there. I don't know if that's going to be a microcosm or the shape of things to come, but a lot of areas made it to new highs and then rolled back over. So that's not healthy. And then a lot of other areas never even <laughs> never even got halfway there, like transports. Okay. So I don't think we're out of the woods just yet. So, But when you do look at the indices, this should be resistance. I don't know if it got chopped off with the chart. Uh, is it an uptrend? Is it a downtrend? What's the net net movement? We'll take a look at the rusty here in just one minute. But even the P's at these high levels... I can't draw a straight line with this. Let's try it. Okay, if I try to draw a straight line, you can see they haven't made a whole lot of forward progress for what? 2000, since, uh, since late 2014. And if you go look at the Rusty, which we'll look at in one second, it's 2013. So do all your analysis and then frame that within what the indices are saying. Now, this is uh, part three. Are uh, we out of the woods or back in the woods? I did a little bear market update as these signals were beginning to trigger. This was back in September, late September. And that video is up on YouTube if you want to check it out. And my point then was we had a weekly bow tie. And as I often say, especially since we've had these trigger, uh, triggers, signals triggering, easy for me to say, I'm going to cup of coffee next week, Dave. Um, Greg Morris says we treat, we take all serial, treat all, we take all signals seriously as if it will be the big one. And I think you have to. So we have this bow tie. And this is the 50 day moving average. I, I like to put the 50 in my charts for reference. And if you get a bow tie on a sharp angle at the 50 and makes a fulcrum like it has here, sometimes those could be pretty powerful signals. The other thing to realize is if you have a signal, a bow tie off of all time highs, those are most important because why? Well, again, everyone up here who has ever bought the stock or the stock market in this particular case is happy. Okay. When the market begins to roll over, those people are beginning or have or forced to rethink their positions. Now, you do have the buy and hold crowd that will hold on no matter what. But even those people get older, retire, um, might have to put a kid through college or something. They might need the money, okay? And if that they see that money evaporating and they have to decide between um, – Harvard or community college, if they lose much more money for the kid, they might be tempted to sell the stock. So remember, psychologically, there's a lot of things that are happening in a market. If you look at the charts, you can get a good idea of what's going on. Okay, it's not a perfect way to trade. There is no perfect way to trade, right? If there was, you'd never see my fat ass again if I found it. You just have to grind it out. It's hard work. Now, the reason I take signals seriously, like my aforementioned buddy Greg, is because you can see these weekly bow ties that we had. The market had some pretty serious slides. I know you people who know me are sick of seeing this, but there's some new people here, so bear with me. This was an uptrend. This was an uptrend. Okay. Downtrend after bow tie, downtrend after bow tie. And do we have a developing downtrend? I don't know. But... 
it doesn't look good on a shorter term basis. And here's a, a an enlarged weekly chart. And you can see we had the bow tie, and technically I think it triggered right here, but what's the market do? Well, it's going straight back up. So what? I hope it goes to new highs, okay? I hope it, it just goes straight up forever. But I think you have to pay attention to what's happened. These are these are some slides, or this is some thoughts I left in from last week. Uh, again, the buy and hope crowd has been rewarded. The market can be a very bad teacher, as you know. You have to be consistent, and you have to be patient when it comes to markets. And then, obviously, pay attention to everything that's going on, like I just showed you. All right, I've got a couple of uh, questions I want to answer, but let's go ahead and open it up for individual stocks. And I'm going to, since we spent so much time already looking at the market, we don't have to spend much time on that, so don't worry about that. David says, great webcast. What is your approach if you're hit hard? With the gap down and a name your own, for instance, HZNP yesterday, would you sell at the open, buy more, start drinking? Thanks. Um, well, I do two out of three of those things. Sooner or later, you will get whacked. Sooner or later, you will get whacked, especially if you're trading momentum. But you'll also get whacked, and I, I should I should frame that within, if you're trading uh, volatile, volatile stocks. But I should frame that within... You can also get whacked in a non-volatile stock, okay? Uh, was it HP where the where the where the guy was um, having some difficulties um, keeping certain body parts? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think you all know the story. Uh, HP lost what a couple billion, ten billion overnight, a hundred billion overnight. I forget how much it is. Once numbers get that big, it's kind of hard to figure them all out. Trillion here, trillion there. It begins to add up after a while. Uh, but something bad could still happen. So I don't want to go into a lot of details on this because I've covered it ad nauseum in these webinars. So if you go in and look at the – dig through the week of charts, you'll find some of those. And then the second half of the layman's guide to trading stocks, um, if you don't have a copy of that – if you have a copy of that you need a PDF, let me know. Um, but in the second half of that, I cover a lot of discretionary techniques. What you do is you let it gap open. The bomb's already exploded, okay? So what you do is you let it gap open, you pull your stop, you let it gap open. And if the stock immediately begins to reverse, then you hang on and you look to improve your exit. Now, sometimes they'll reverse and keep reversing. You could trail a stop higher all day long and exit on the close. You might actually stick with the position because it might've turned out to be, be the mother of all knockout moves, okay? But yes, you have to have an uncle point. You have to have a point at which you will get out. And again, I don't want to go into that too much this week. But yeah, it does happen. Uh, HZNP yesterday would be your example. Let's take a look at that. Now, here's one thing good. Uh, most of the time, surprises happen in the direction of the trend. Okay? Well, what is HZNP doing? It's going down. Okay? So you had a big gap down yesterday. Well, that's in the direction of the trend. You should not have bought this stock because what? Your big blue arrow is pointed down. So that's one thing good. Look at this gap over here, okay? It won't always happen this way. If it did, again, you never see my fat ass. But look, the trend was what? It was going up, and you had a gap in the direction of the trend. So as a general statement, surprises, look at this. The stock what dropped, uh, what percentage move is that, roughly? 50%. Stock dropped 50%. Well, look, it had a big drop here. It just kind of consolidated. So this should not be a shocker to you. Now, if you were long for some strange reason yesterday, okay, and you pulled your stop, and really that's not that big of a move. Three points is not going to kill you if you're trading properly, proper size. But looks to me like it really didn't improve much before it came back in. Let's take a look at a five-minute chart. I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm doing it anyway, aren't I? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this would have been, it gaps open on you, you wait a few minutes to see what happens, and then you have an uncle point, you get taken out, okay? You lick your wounds, you move on. Cuss and fuss, and then scream next. But again, trade in the direction of the trend. Stop me if you heard that before. So hopefully that helps you out, David, and uh, hopefully in the future you'll be mostly on uh, long Could you give an examples where there could be short triggers in sectors? 
Um, well, right now the sectors, as you saw a second ago, they're kind of choppy overall. So you're not really seeing a whole lot of short triggers because they're all over the place. We did have some short triggers in some of these sectors not too long ago. Let's take a look at like the drugs would be a good example. You had kind of a choppy pullback in here. Let's take a look at like a bow tie. So let me see if I can find you something better. Maybe drugs are the best. Well, take a look at semis, for instance. Let's just take the chart out. Notice in the recent slide, you had the market went sideways and then began to, you had a thrust lower, kind of imploded a little bit. Okay, that one might have been, might not have been too obvious. But certainly by here, where you broke down from the range and your first little pullback. That's a great little pattern. First pullback after a base breakdown or breakout, however you want to look at it. And also, lo and behold, there's your bow tie. So that would be an example. Uh, Energies uh, tried to bottom out. They made a bow tie. So far, it hasn't worked. So there's an example on the upside. Okay, let's take a look at... Um, we already looked at the S&P. We'll take a quick look today. Uh, selling off a little bit. Now, here's the thing. If you're just looking at the market from here to here, so far it just looks like a pullback, okay? If you pick it apart a little bit, well, we're taking out multi-week lows, so that's a little bit concerning. But, yeah, it's still just a pullback. Let's not get too excited. But if you back the chart out a little bit, we're stalling short of these prior highs in here, and everything I just said about everyone who sold and didn't sell, or everyone who didn't sell and who was long, is going to be forced to rethink these positions as this thing begins to slide. Um, I'm going to beat the dead horse on all this, especially now that I've got my, uh, I got ripped a new one. You know, it's got some nasty grams. Hey, you said it's going down, it's going up. It's like, well, market could do whatever it wants, but I'm just telling you what I see, and I'm telling you it's a dangerous environment to trade. So. So what for me saying I'm prudent? You know, it's like I'll never say I told you so in this business, but I might. I might write a column. I'll be in Germany next week. But maybe the week after, if we begin to implode, I'll write you a nice little column about I told you so. And it's the same thing I've been preaching for the last month or so. Yeah, Reverend Dave. <laughs> uh, NASDAQ, same sort of actually kind of selling off a little bit. Shorter term, not too bad. Longer term, eh, it's bumping up against some new highs. And, and again, as I often preach, very dangerous to come into a market and let's see if we could zoom in a little bit. It's very dangerous when a market kind of goes straight up at a high level like this. It's hard for a new leg to mount on top of the old leg without some consolidation. So it's just very dangerous. Let's take a look at the Rusty real quick. The Rusty, if you don't have time to go through 2000 stocks, then look at the Russell 2000, okay? What's it doing today? Down a percent and change. It's not good, okay? Now, the market really had been that tradable lately. It's been chopping all over the place overall, and that's been tough, and that's why we've been mostly sitting on our hands, and that's why some clients in the service got bored and moved on. That's fine, okay? I, I and, and that's those are my best clients, those clients that get bored, move on, chase rainbows, provided they don't blow up, and come back. Those are my favorite clients. Because they come back and say, okay, Dave, common sense in the end wins. Trend in the end wins. Avoiding stocks look like electric cardiograms wins. Top picking and bottom picking is a loser's game. They get it. But sometimes you got to go through a trader's journey. We talked about that last week to get there. And that's fine. I'm not going anywhere. All right. So Russell not looking so hot. Other than C's are not too far from flirting with all-time highs. Russell not so much. On a net net basis, it has gone sideways for a long, long time. We did have major signals here in place. I think we had a weekly bow tie a long time ago. Yeah. And we had like a two day signal long before that. So you could see you had the bow tie, you had the trigger, and you have like a little secondary retrace in here. But I wouldn't get too excited about that just yet. I think this market basis of Russell is still in a lot of trouble. You're welcome, David. I appreciate the question. 
Okay, uh, APDN. Yeah, that, now there's an example. Uh, let's go ahead and open up for individual stocks. Uh, there's an example of why money management is important. This was on my Landry list not too long ago. And if you guys are in delayed service, you've probably just seen like, hey, that's a good looking setup. Uh, it took off, okay, and banged out some profit targets in here. And then what happens it begins to implode. Well, you get stopped out. You get scratched out at a, at a scratch on the rest. This is why we use money management. They don't always keep going, okay? So, yeah, I would, I would avoid this stock now because the HV is just going nuts. And it went, went from three to nine and nine to three, okay? So avoid it. I thought you trade momentum, but with a pullback where risk is less. I do. What's the question? CVS on a pullback for Miss Susan. Miss Susan, have you been having any good dreams lately? Little inside joke. Uh, as a possible short, well, I don't like the big down leg here. I know the market kind of went nuts on that day. Uh, let me interview myself. Is the stock in trouble? Absolutely. So I think you got a good eye as far as the stock in trouble. I don't like this wide range bar down. But, yeah, here's a stock that's in trouble. Now, what did I just say about surprises? Surprises tend to happen in the direction of the trend. Since this thing has rolled over, it would not surprise me if it had some surprises. You're welcome, Steve. Steve says, great info. Thanks, Dave. LNCE. Yeah, LNCE is one we uh, that was on the um, new highs list, okay? Now, it's a food, and... It's kind of wide and loose in its uptrend, so it's hard for me to get excited about. It's it's electrocardiogram that's worked its way higher. So this isn't my favorite kind of stock. If you go back to like that APDN, you could see that it traded before it actually um, effed up. You know, it kind of it went up and it kind of consolidated, and then it really took off, and then it pulled back, and then it really, really, really took off before it imploded. Okay. And this is, a good, again, a lesson in money management. But you can see that this stock kind of trades cleanly, whereas that other one, it's worked its way higher, but it's sort of all over the place. So I would not go after a stock that looked like that. Howard says, risk, if you don't bet, you can't win. But if no chips left, you can't play. Hence, manage risk. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Susan and I are having a little private conversation here. Baba, Baba, I like for a change. Um, to those of you who did the IPO thing with me, I think Phil was one of them. Uh, one of the IPO patterns I do like is when IPOs implode for a while, bottom out and begin to take off a little bit. Uh, I think you could probably do a little bit better in the IPOs than this, but I certainly can't argue with the fact that it's bottomed out and pulled back. Okay, Phil. So I'm going to agree with you on that. Phil likes a 50-day moving average. Let's just see where it is. Just for S and Gs. I bet it's pulled back to the 50. No, maybe not. No, it's uh, too um, – hasn't quite pulled back there. But it'll get there. Yeah, I'm going to give that an okay. It's got a little bad memories here and there, but I'll give that an okay. All right, Howard wants to look at GSCO. All right, Howard, let's take a look at that. GSCO. GSCO. Let's try it again. Okay. Did you fat finger symbol or am I fat finger in the symbol? GSCO. That sounds like a stock I know. It doesn't. GSCO. Okay, it won't come up on my screen. All right, how does vert look as a short? Vert, V R T. Uh, no, it's, it's electrocardiogram. And here's the other thing too. It's, a uh, it's an IPO, but it really hasn't moved around that much. Okay. Or it's a good, I guess it's a toddler now. It's been out for a few months, but it's electrocardiogram. And if you don't know what, if you're, I don't know what you call electrocardiograms in, uh, other countries. But uh, let me see if I can find you one. That's what a ledger cardiogram looks like. If you look at a chart, you could hear beep, 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 beep. 
beep. It's kind of funny. I, I know I tell a story every week, but uh, one of the most rewarding things for me is to speak to a foreign speaking audience through a translator. And the funnest part of the, you know, all this theory and all this other stuff is kind of boring and not exciting. It's exciting to me, but it's less exciting to an audience, especially through a translator. But once we get to the charts, it's like uh, everybody begins to sit up a little bit in their, in their seats because they know, hey, maybe Dave's going to find us the next big stock. And I like to do that, and that's kind of fun to do live. It's a little scary sometimes, but it's fun. And then as we're going through charts, I teach people, okay, electrocardiogram, you hear the beep, beep, beep. And what's funny with these foreign-speaking audiences, I'll just start going through the charts and then look at the audience for, for feedback, and then people will start beeping in the audience. So that's kind of a, a fun thing to do. Maybe we'll get some people beeping next week. Father Dave Commandments. All right, Craig's – I always get something good from Craig. How you doing, buddy? All right, Howard says, Goldman Sachs, GSCO, and other highly capitalized trading houses control the markets. Well, so what if they do? So what? They don't control every single market. And if you think somebody's controlling the market, then trade on their side. <laughs> if you think you've, you know, you got to be careful with this conspiracy theory stuff. I had a guy started emailing me pages and pages and pages. And this has happened more than one occasion. But one guy in particular was really going into details about why he thought he was being screwed and manipulated. It's like, well, just find a way to trade. If you think you're being manipulated, find a way to trade outside of that. Widen your stop out a little bit. I used to, I used to help a uh, kind of, I guess you call him a day trader, pick stocks. And then we started getting annihilated because people on the floor were targeting uh, – his stocks and all. Well, as I became, uh, well, I was always longer term oriented, but I was helping out a day trader. But it made me realize that uh, my liberal entries and my liberal stops, I'm avoiding all that noise and I'm not even having to worry about it. Whereas he's down there, nickels and pennies, and they're really, really messing him up. So just live with it. Whose fault is the, oh, good point, Phil. Whose fault is the law is loss? Yours or Goldman Sachs? Yeah. You know, it's 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 you're the only. It's up to you uh, if it's if you take a trade or don't trade take a trade. And this is that's what's hard about this business. You got to really, really look at your uh, a lot of introspection. You really have to look at yourself. I'm working on I'm working on this Dave T-shirts for the world tour. That'd be awesome, man. Uh, we might be putting Italy on that world tour. I'm I'm um, uh, I guess you'd call it negotiations. Of course, I'm going to go to Italy. Jeez, why not? Love Italy. I've, I've yet to go someplace I didn't like. Russia was, eh, Russia was okay. ANGI. I hope it's a good stock so I can say, I hope it's a good looking chart so I can say, Angie, you're beautiful. Angie, beautiful. Uh, no, it's too gappy. Gaps down, gaps up, gaps down, gaps up. I wonder if it's getting uh, jerked around by earnings or something. Dave, I thought you ignored the news. Well, I ignore the news, but you can't ignore the charts. Kind of all over the place. I'd leave that one alone, Andre. Meat I like. With an E and an A. <laughs> or did like, at least. Um, yeah, it's not set up. You had a little TKO in here. It's a little... It's a little all over the place, okay? And that's the only thing I don't like about it, and it's super speculative, obviously. But if you kind of zoom in a little bit, I'm always asked about the Arbalist TKO. This is kind of the what I call the Arbalist TKO. I actually would have preferred more of a knockout move on this day. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly in a trend. It's on the momentum list. It's definitely there. No conspiracy charts allow us to trade with them. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Dave, how do I check your past performance? You could download, you could download the service archives. Uh, email me directly. I did change servers on that, so I don't know what I have up or what's been uh, posted. Oops, J E. I forgot who asked. Uh, no, okay. So this is kind of begun. This is this. If you didn't have these this many uh, days in between, it would look more like a TKO. But you've got too many days to where now it looks like it's rolling over. The beauty of a TKO, the trend knockout pattern, is sometimes 
it's the beginning of a rollover and you don't get triggered. That's one of my favorite patterns. So you have a stock that's just kind of plodding along, bloom, 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 bloom and then bam, you get a knockout move. And your entry's up here, and the stock just keeps imploding. So you don't lose any money. You don't put any capital into harm's way, and that's beautiful. And if it does reverse and head higher, then you get in, and hopefully you're capturing a true reversal of the trend, okay? QIHU, and let's take a look at that one. QIHU. Uh, okay, well, in a stock like this, I prefer them if they're coming off of major, major, major lows when they're bottoming like this. I hear you, though. It's a couple year lows. Um, I would probably pass because you still have a little bit of overhead supply. It's kind of wide and loose. Uh, I would find if you want to trade emerging trends, find something coming off of major lows. Carol says, GLD, how lower can it go? Or how low can it go? Well, it's always darkest before it gets more dark, as you know. I, somebody said that's a yogiism. Um, I thought I thought it was a Daveism, but I'll give it to Yogi. Rest in peace. Um, well, I think we'll see the mother of all bottoms here someday, but so far, uh, this ain't it, <laughs> obviously. Uh, who knows how low can it go? Just follow along, okay? If it keeps dropping, then obviously you want to stay out of the way. Um, recently, I was um, putting together slides of showing someone that all of these major tops will have some sort of bow tie or something, and as long as that high from the bow tie doesn't get taken out, that top remains in place. So, I mean, like at the P's, for instance, until that high gets taken out, that bow tie top remains in place, and that's why I'm going to stay cautious. EDUC, I'm not a big fan of educational stocks, but I did see some that are railing. Uh, well, that's media, actually. It's not educational. Um, it looks okay, but it's kind of extended in here. It's going from – it's up, it's a, up what, 200%. Also, very, very thin, only 30000 on average. So, yeah, it's a momentum stock. I want to give you a high five for having a good eye, but um, I would avoid it. Craig Watson, commandment number five, ignoring all news is next to guidelines. Absolutely. Oh, Craig put my commandments out here. <laughs> Father Day's commandments. Thou shalt be a trend-following moron. Thou shalt use stops. Thou shalt only buy upon a proper trigger. Thou shalt manage money properly using position size, volatility, and risk. I like it. Ignore all news is next to godliness. That's number five. Honor thy long-term transitional patterns. Very good. Yeah, Craig, I should probably cut and paste that. Um, that could be a column. It's a work in progress. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. Appreciate it, Craig. Oh, announced the takeover today in Angie? Well, yeah, what are you going to do there? Yeah. Well, there's your surprise in the direction of the trend, okay? It's been in an uptrend as of late, and there's your surprise. I've never used Angie's List. Anybody use it? Um, this is an ETF. I'm not sure what it is, but it's got a lot of overhead supply to it. It looks – I hear you. It's got a bow tie. It's taken off. But it's got a lot of overhead supply, and it's kind of electrocardiogram, so I would stay away from that. Zen? Susan wants to talk about Zen. Let's talk about Zen, Susan. Uh, I'm not seeing anything to get excited about here. Let's take a take the uh, moving averages out. It's it's just gap tire, but it's electrocardiogram. I mean, it's just all over the place. There's no structure here for me to work with. Okay. Bab is on a 21 EMA, which has been a good guide for it. Yeah, you know, a lot of people use that 21 EMA. I've always used a 20 EMA, but uh, I hear you. 21 EMA. Some people say it's um, got some sort of Fibonacci number to it, but I, I would avoid it because of that. But but I hear you. 21. Yeah. And, you know, you could just trade. If you wanted to keep life really simple, you could just look for daylight and then pullbacks to the EMA. I think I wrote about that in the layman's. ULBI. 
I I like to just look at blank charts, obviously, but I have I wouldn't call it quantified things. I used to quantify things, but I realize that's that I should just look at charts. But I have, I guess, qualified things for those who are a little newer to trading, like pullbacks to moving averages, which I think Linda Rasky actually did long before me. I'm not the first guy. But the only exception with the way I do it is I use daylight. And I'm actually just looking at the chart anyway. I'm not actually looking at the moving average. I know the pattern is there. It's like I look at a market. I see it rolling over. I know the, I know the bow tie is there. I don't rush out and put the bow tie on right away. I just look at the chart first. But, yeah, to those who need to um, – a little bit more, um, what's the word, structure or some sort of a system or whatever. There's nothing wrong with moving averages. I mean, like in this case here, this stock, whoever's asking about this, ULBI, kind of did a, a knockout move to the moving average and it took off again. Uh, I would avoid this, put it on your minimum list, but this is a really thin, thin stock. I guess one day I need to hire somebody and do like an ultra aggressive small cap service for people who like to trade these stocks. Uh, you know, give the people what they want. Mr. Reese says, great study lessons today. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. I, you know, that's, that just uh, brings a tear to my eye. And, you know, I'm happy to be here. Obviously, I have fun doing these things. Uh, last one. Um, we'll get two more. We'll, we'll finish up. Uh, it didn't really break out past the prior high in here. And this one could be choppy when it trends. Um, I don't think I've ever made money in this stock, if, if memory serves. And, and I don't want to be too um, biased on it because of that, but let's just look at the chart. And no, it just barely got past its prior high, so I think I would leave that alone. And finally, PGND. Did we talk about that one? Yeah, it's trying to break out a little bit. A little bit thin. A little bit thin. Um, what do they do, Phil? It's an IPO. It's, eh, it's kind of hard for me to get excited about it. It would have to really bust out past these prior highs and pull back before I go after it. Okay, um, let me just make sure we threw all the slides. Again, no show next week because uh, I'll be in Germany. And then uh, I did start podcasting. If you go to my website, podcast. Last week, people asked me where is the um, the foresight and hindsight service. So right before the show, I posted. Uh, I went to. Uh, if you go to my website and go to um, New This Week. Let me show you that link real quick. PG and nurses performance. Go figure. What does that mean? Uh, right here, new this week. And scroll down. And this is the foresight and hindsight uh, service. Oh, I should have put the um, title on here. So you'll all these stocks that you're going to see in this uh, in upcoming webinars, you'll see them you'll see them in there in there too. So you know it's not just completely hindsight, warts and all too. Uh, once again, uh, this week ends Friday. I have the um, the thing on sale. You get a whole year to trading service if you get the uh, stock selection course. And then there's the foresight and hindsight service. You can go to this direct link if you want to, or just go to new this week. All right, uh, I think a better. Um, Go ahead and wrap things up based on the time constraints. Uh, as you guys can tell, I love doing these shows. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you taking time on your busy schedule. I'm flattered and humbled by your appearance here today. Um, we may have broken another record this week, so that's kind of exciting for me too. Uh, so thanks again. If we don't talk between now and um, the weekend, everybody have a great week. Again, no show next week. I will not be here, and I'm not going to do it on the road. I've got an all-day uh, seminar on Thursday. So I'll be busy with that anyway, but everybody have a fantastic week. If we don't talk again and then see you guys and girls in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much.